So there has been a video response to my video of talking points on the social contract. I'm going to warn you now that this is a lengthy video, apparently one of two parts to it, and this one is 28 minutes long. Extraneous pauses and other similar material is going to be cut out. I warn you now, it's not really a response to my video at all. You'll see why as we go on throughout. Here we go. Uh, I tried to post a video response, um, and I posted my video on the social contract. Um, and he rejected it on the grounds that it was not directly responding to his video. That's because it wasn't a direct response to my talking points video in question. The video responder went on to discuss a comment that was not on my video, did not come from me, and discussed issues I did not cover directly in respect to the person who made the video. I'll make it plain. I am not in the business of giving free video views to people who advocate for the position that it's every man for himself, that governments are illegitimate, laws are illegitimate, and everyone has rights so long as those rights do not infringe upon the others, while simultaneously advocating for the abolition of the rights of people who wish to maintain a form of law and order by means of government. However, since this video is supposed to be a direct response to my own, it has been approved, hence why I am now going to deal with it. In the video, he doesn't make any claims about meta-ethics. He doesn't... I mean, it's not really a big deal, but it'll become a problem later, as we might see, because I don't know exactly what he means when he makes normative ethical claims. Really? I thought I had made it quite plain what my meaning was in the video. Perhaps they should begin again by consulting the nearest elementary school and going to learn about the basics of ethical behaviour in a society. Maybe that's the problem. I mean, what's so difficult to understand about the issue? And why the discussion on meta-ethics. I'm not interested in getting into any meta-anything. I'm talking about the real fucking world here. That's all I care about. I can't tell if he's a realist or an anti-realist or something in between. An anti-realist? What? Okay, okay, enough of this. Let's fast forward to the first real response to the points I raised in the video, shall we? So it's a response to the claim that taxation is theft, and he, he attempts to argue that it's not on the basis because taxation is part of the social contract. Whenever someone responds to a claim, it's important to define the p position of your opponent and define your terms. He does neither. Read the fucking manual. As stated very clearly in the introduction video I made prior to posting of the Talking Points series, the purpose of the series that will appear on this channel under the name Talking Points is to reiterate of the few of the standard and oft-repeated libertarian slash randroid talking points that we have all heard before in some form or other and to address them as they are raised. This will be an as-needed ad hoc production that will come about as and when I am exposed to more of these points. The term taxation refers to compulsory payment to state revenue. Theft refers to a violation of property rights. The argument would involve the argument that taxation is theft would involve stating that the government is taking people's property and violating their property rights. It's no different from theft. And in this particular part of the video, the video maker is ignoring the legitimacy of governments to tax their citizens. I'll come back to this though because I'm sure that this will be raised again later in the video, especially as this particular video maker appears to be a full-blown anarchist. So that that's kind of like what you would be saying if you're saying taxation is theft, but in order to do this, you first need to establish that there is such thing as property rights, and you'd have to give some kind of conception of what property rights are. Once again, read the fucking manual. I have already explained the purpose of this video, and that is to address specific talking points that are raised as and when they come up. I'm not doing a treatise on the concept of property rights. Suffice to say, I don't believe in the myth of natural rights, and that all rights that a society respects are those that human beings have decided are rights in the first place. Examples of rights that now exist, but were not granted to people in the past, are far-ranging, and include such fine examples as granting black people and women the right to vote, recognising the right of homosexual people to have relations with one another, recognising the validity of interracial relationships, and abolishing slavery in order to grant everyone equal rights and protections under the law. Now this is a simplification of the circumstances that came about, but I trust in most of my viewers getting the essential point I'm raising here. He doesn't actually challenge that aspect of the claim. He never says, well, they just have a wrong conception of property rights. He just kind of lets it go and assumes that property rights are legitimate, but then goes on and makes his claim about the social contract. Now, so if not representing your opponent's claim was, wasn't bad enough, um, he doesn't even define his own position. He claims taxation is theft, 
I'm not sure I ever made the claim that taxation is theft. Once again, read the fucking manual. So far as a response, this video isn't. It appears to proceed on an assumption that my video is in itself a treatise on property rights, the social contract, and the concept of taxation as a legitimate form of government function that is applied to people, when in fact, as anyone with half a brain would be able to ascertain, the video is a response to libertarian slash randroid talking points. I really do tire of having to repeat myself for other people's benefits. They really should learn to go look at other videos in the series before assuming what the intent of my video is, or assuming I haven't covered a particular talking point before. I really would like to get to the point now, please. Taxation is not theft. Taxation is part of the social contract. It's the first sentence of the video. And then he immediately starts responding to objections to the social contract. The social tr contract needs to be defined, and then you need to present arguments in favor or against in his case, in favour, and justify the claim. No. Once again, the video series is intended to address specific talking points raised in respect of several claims made by libertarians and randroids with respect to varying subjects. The video in question dealt with talking points related to the social contract. I do not feel the need to write a treatise on the social contract every time I do a fucking talking points video, especially as so many other video makers have already done this before. He doesn't do this at all, no arguments given, and the burden of proof falls on the person making the positive claim. If you're going to say that something exists, then you need, you're the one responsible for producing the argument. If I were to say God exists, then the burden of proof would fall on me to prove that God exists and define what I mean when I say God. Now, if you're going to just assert something without evidence, then I'm just going to dismiss it without evidence. Just as I dismiss the entire basis of anarchism as a legitimate form of social cohesion, because no evidence has ever been presented that such a system can work outside of small society groups based upon people who completely agree with each other, and the problems inherent with such a system as small tribal groups is something that requires an entire video of its own to deal with. Once again, the purpose of the video was to respond to talking points raised by libertarians and randroids, and in this case, full-blown anarchists. The video maker should really have responded to the video on the basis that it was intended. I was not writing a treatise on the social contract. Do I really have to repeat myself again? So you're going to say the social contract exists, I'm going to say the social contract doesn't exist. And I'm going to say that you can deny its existence all you want. But the fact is that governments have legitimacy over their territories, and that people have the right to leave the country any time they want. But if they wish to stay, then they have to abide by the laws of the land, and that is the basis of the social contract. If you don't like that, then that is your personal preference. But simply saying the social contract doesn't exist because I can't show you a legal document called the social contract, or give you an ontological argument on the issue, or a treatise on the subject, doesn't actually make the social contract disappear. Once again, the video is a talking points response video. It should be treated as such. If you object to the ways in which I respond to specific talking points, that's one thing. But don't expect me to write a 50,000 word dissertation on the nature of a social contract just because you're too lazy to go and look up the concept for yourself, or even refer to another video that is somewhat related. Now I haven't made a video on the social contract as a concept because I don't feel the need to do so, although people like this guy have shown me that even the simplest and most obvious concepts need explaining in a book as long as War and Peace before they will accept it which is a bit tedious in all honesty. Where does that leave us? Nowhere. Um, the social, con social is a word that pertains to interactions between individuals of a group. A contract is an agreement that's entered into voluntarily by two or more parties with the intention of creating a legal obligation. Okay, stop. Now this guy is misusing the spirit of the social contract by appealing to the word contract by its literal definition according to a dictionary. Not all contracts are legally binding, especially if there is no legal mechanism to enforce contracts. And that is an entirely different subject to the social contract. I'm not appealing to contract law when I talk about the social contract. I can't appeal to contract law. That would be absurd. The social contract is much more basic than that. Which may have elements in writing, though contracts can be made orally. So you can't have a implicit agreement between people, that's a contract. This particular talking point has already been addressed. I'm sure that it will be raised again in the video though, given that it was raised in the original itself. That doesn't have to be written down. 
I'm not going to deny that. But it doesn't follow that you put social and contract next to each other, and now taxation is just justified. Why not? What specifically is your objection to a government collecting taxes from its citizens other than your misguided opinion that taxation is theft because it's taking money from you without your consent? As far as I'm concerned, keeping every single penny you acquire without contributing to the society that enabled you to acquire your money and property in the first place is immoral because that society requires an upkeep. When the very first governments were formed, it was understood that in order for them to survive, they would need a revenue stream. Of course, governments of the past are a far cry from those of today, but the principle remains the same. I'll come back to it, however, because now I'm getting ahead of myself. I could basically do anything I want and claim that it's because the social contract gives me the right to do so. No, you can't. You don't have the authority to contract in this manner. Governments have this right by virtue of their owning the territory you live in. I'm sure you'll say, but what gives them this right? And I can respond by pointing out the fact that they've acquired the territory in the past, they've held the territory, and they now own the territory, at which you might be tempted to respond by appealing against the fact that almost every government in the past acquired territory by force or through purchase from someone else who acquired it by force. This has already been addressed in the original video. Or a state could make the same claim on the same dubious grounds. For example, I could argue that the Nazi death camps weren't murder and the Jews agreed to the social contract. You disingenuous little fucker. First of all, Nazi Germany did not come about through democratic elections. Hitler was appointed as Chancellor through a coalition agreement with von Hindenburg in the 1930s. Secondly, the Jewish people not only did not give their explicit consent to the conditions imposed on them by Nazi Germany, but the vast majority of them lived in countries that were invaded by Nazi Germany, such as Poland and France. And thirdly, the Jewish people, and this is the most critical point with regard to the social contract, could not leave at all. When someone appeals to the social contract being invalid because of governments that did not allow a certain group of people to leave the territory, it ignores that one critical factor, the social contract. It is valid only in territories where you have the option to leave. In countries such as Nazi Germany and North Korea, you did not have any option to leave the country, therefore you were forced into a situation that you could not get out of. By contrast, if you want to leave the United States of America, you can do so anytime you wish. By not leaving beforehand. So I could say that the Holocaust was justified under the social contract. Now obviously that's going to be offensive to my opponent, but... Oh really? You saw my response coming, did you? What a fucking wanker you truly are. And it's offensive, not because we're talking about Nazi Germany, but because you've used such a situation as the Holocaust to score cheap political points for yourself, ignoring the one core principle of the social contract, that you can renounce it any time you want. How is the argument actually different? I believe I've already explained this. And, you know, if I'm going to be retarded for making this analogy, well, you know, sorry, you didn't really explain what the fuck you meant. I shouldn't have needed to. Are you that fucking stupid? The first obje objection that's uh, raised is that the social contract isn't valid because I didn't agree to it, or someone I didn't agree to it. Like I said, it's never justified that the social contract even exists, so I don't really think that there's anything to agree to. So finally we come to our first talking point, and he couldn't even get that right, could he? Let me explain it to you one more time. This video is a Talking Points video in response to Talking Points raised by Libertarians and Randroids. These Talking Points are raised by these people themselves. Responding to those by trying to rebut the actual Talking Points themselves is a complete waste of everybody's fucking time. For fuck's sake. And then he says that I did agree and you can prove it because of my various proofs of citizenship. Quote. Yes, that's true. You have to apply for your citizenship documents, such as passport and so on. In applying for these documents, you are acknowledging the right of the territory you live in to govern according to the rules they have set up. If you didn't agree to the terms, why did you apply for your social security card, for example? Or your driver's license? Or your passport? If you really don't acknowledge the right of the government of the territory to govern you, then simply don't apply for your social security number or driver's license. 
In doing so, you are implicitly agreeing to abide by the terms and conditions stated in the social contract, since you usually do so once you are of age when it is renewed and explicitly agreeing to be bound by the laws and rules governed in specifically granting you the privilege of a driver's license or a social security number. This is a non sequitur and he misunderstands the meaning of the word agreed. It does not follow that just because I've been labeled a citizen of something or somewhere that I have therefore consented to any terms or conditions, especially when the terms are not spelled out explicitly. Fuck me, is this the best this guy can come up with? First of all, look up implicit consent. Lots of private companies use it all the time for renewal of contracts. Secondly, the terms are spelled out explicitly. It's why you go to school. Don't you have civics classes in your country? Are there not numerous documents made available to you that detail the laws and rules you are required to abide by in your particular state or city? I'm thinking this is not the case, therefore you are simply in willful ignorance of the rule of law in your country, because those documents are available to me any time I need them in England. They go out of their way to make sure you know the law here. Now you might say that this social contract is implicit, but that doesn't mean I know what it says. Again, look up your local state and federal laws. Your ignorance of those laws is not an excuse. Do you really think that kind of an excuse would wash in a courtroom? Really? You know, you might as well claim that uh, slaves consented to their condition on the grounds that they were branded. Except that slaves did not consent to their condition. I don't accept slavery, and they had no way by which they could get out of their condition of slavery of their own accord. Their conditions were entirely down to whether or not their owners were feeling generous or not. Do not compare the two situations when addressing me, because you will not like my response if you do. Then he goes off on this tangent, I would say, that about... Um, parents consenting through the social contract for me, and then the contract was renewed when I came of age. No arguments given for how he knows that this, ar this uh, contract was renewed. So, after this rambling, incoherent rant is dispensed with, what you actually just heard is this child glossing over three talking points that libertarians and randroids have made to me and my responses to them. I mean, really, what the hell is this supposed to be? He calls this a response. Being alive in a certain area doesn't prove anything about my psychological state or my condition. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Now we've gone about five minutes into this rambling response to my talking points videos, and what has he essentially said? Nothing other than to reiterate the same tired and old talking points that I'm pretty sure I've already addressed. But this last few seconds really takes the piss. As I stated earlier, he is presenting information as if it were a fact. Dude, read the fucking manual. I have now on numerous occasions explained the purpose of my video. This essentially counts as a straw man, one of many I'm sure I will come across. He just says that, yeah, it was renewed when you came of age, like it's just an obvious fact. Did you or did you not apply for your social security number when you came of age? Did you or did you not apply for your driver's license when you came of age? Did you or did you not apply for a passport or citizen's identification document when you came of age? The moment you do any one of these things, you are recognizing the legitimacy of the state, its laws and rules, and therefore are renewing your consent to be governed by the social contract. I'm sorry if you don't like that. Like he just observed that the sun rose. No, you didn't. I'll ignore this little appeal to ridicule. It's not really that obvious that I consented to something if I don't think that I consented to it. Once again for the slow learners. Implicit consent. Now I actually think that this is somewhat ironic because he called me an arrogant little boy in the comment section when we were arguing about his um, not letting me post that video um, as a response. He called, you know, he called me an arrogant little boy and then in his video he's saying that I personally consented to a social contract. At what point did I use the specific phrase Matt Barrow explicitly and personally consented to the social contract? I did not. What a cunt. It's like he knows more about my relationship with the state than I do. He's like he's like informing me of my relationship with this organization and society. He's like, oh, you consented to it. 
If you don't know the difference between a general statement of implicit consent that everyone who chooses to remain in a given country makes with regard to the social contract and a specific statement that a specific person made an explicit agreement to something, then no one can help you out of your fucked up view on reality. And don't talk to me about arrogance when you sit there and assume that you have the right to garner views off of me from an irrelevant video that wasn't even addressing me directly or the video that I have actually produced accusing me of censorship when I had done nothing whatsoever to your ability to post your own videos or your own comments and telling me that the only reason I didn't approve your video response was because I didn't want others to see it, you fucking hypocritical little boy. Man, that's news to me. Thanks, man, for pointing that out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Appeal to ridicule. I mean, otherwise I would have thought I was getting robbed. Except you do think you are getting robbed. Erroneously, I might add. Yeah. I feel like I'm not being robbed anymore, now I'm just paying my dues as a citizen. Except, you don't want to contribute to society like everyone else. You just want to leech off of us instead. The next objection that he's responding to is that the social contract is not voluntary. This is the same as the first one, so I'll just skip it. I wonder why he did that. Then he goes on about parents and consent and contra contracts with the... Sh whatever, I mean, he goes on about parents. No. I wonder why he's skipping over all of these talking points. Could it be because he has an agenda to promote his own political ideology in the guise of an actual video response? Because so far, nowhere in this rambling, incoherent response of his has he gotten anywhere near to actually addressing my responses to these talking points that were raised by people in his camp. Frankly, I'm getting more fucking stupid just listening to his fucking video. I don't really find that to be that interesting. Um... Or is it more likely because you have no response to the actual points raised? And then he goes on and says, Your parents' continued residence in the country after they came of age was implied consent to be bound by the social contract. I feel I have been very clear on my points so far, but let's not allow actual facts or what someone said in their actual video get in the way of misrepresenting what they said now, eh? Well, bound is correct. Like, sounds like slavery, you know, you're... So, if you agree to be bound by the terms and conditions of the private contract for a two-bedroom apartment someplace to hand over rent every month, is that slavery? For fuck's sake. Bound. Must be like locked in chains. Yes, because you're a disingenuous little fucker who is trying to misinterpret the meaning of my fucking statements. Seriously. Grow the fuck up, kid. <clears throat> um, even though you didn't actually consent to anything. Um... I'm sorry, excuse me? Say that again clearly next time. And for the record, we've been over this before. Implicit consent. You chose to remain in the country for which the laws and rules apply. Therefore, you chose to remain bound by those laws and rules. So is there any empirical evidence that they agreed to the social contract? No. Continued residence just means that you were alive and breathing when you turned 18. So you can't just leave the country then? You can't choose to take a boat out of the territory or get on a plane and fly overseas? these things are impossible? See, this entire line of non-reasoning would be impressive if we were living in North fucking Korea, but neither of us are. I live in England, and you I'm pretty sure live somewhere in the United States if I'm not mistaken, and both of those countries do not keep you from leaving if you want to. Is this evidence of consent? No, it's not evidence of consent at all. We've been over this. Repeating yourself is getting tiresome. Just saying that it was consent is just a mere assertion. Um, he mentions the Constitution of the United States as a contract, and I would uh, recommend Lysander Spooner's work. And I would recommend actually reading the fucking Constitution itself, rather than relying on an obviously biased source like Spooner. Don't you have an original thought in your head? Our essay, No Treason, the Constitution of No Authority for a detailed refutation of the idea that the Constitution is a contract. I think his, his primary argument is that the Constitution was written by a bunch of men a long time ago, and they're all dead now, so it doesn't make any sense to have a contract be binding to their posterity. None of this rambling response actually addressed any of my statements at all. No surprise there, then. Um, when they obviously weren't even alive when it was written, so how could they have known or consented to... I don't know. Perhaps because the Constitution is still the bedrock of American society today? Fuck me. As arguments go, this guy's is the most ridiculous I've seen yet. The next objection raised 
that he's going to respond to, supposedly. I fucking knew he would start poisoning the well. Is the social contract is invalid without your explicit consent. Um, yeah, I would say that most contracts are invalid if you don't have explicit consent. Now, funny how my response wasn't actually mentioned, was it? There is implicit consent, just involuntary interactions, but this you know doesn't really apply to the state because the state does all sorts of things and is very intimately involved in your life. Yeah. Talking point. The social contract is invalid because the state does some things that I don't like. And I believe I've already addressed this one. Many important transactions are handled through um, implicit contracts. Uh, the more money that's being discussed in any situation, the more likely it is that you're going to have a um, a co an actual contract. So like if you go buy a house and get a loan or um, you pay rent somewhere or you do a big business deal, you're going to have a contract because there's a lot of money on the line. But regular interactions are just commonplace. They don't always have contracts that are written and signed. So now you're accepting the concept of implicit consent. I thought you rejected it earlier. Internal consistency is a little bit like it would be for people like Kent Hovind. A little bit too much to ask for. I mean, I pay about $250-ish a month to the state. So that's kind of a lot of money. Um, I would think that I would have a, a contract if I was required to pay some. Now I'm not telling you what my tax bill is to the government of my country, but it's clearly spelled out in the tax laws. This entire talking point is a red herring that doesn't actually address my response to the original at all. Here's the interesting thing about responding to people's videos or comments. It's usually a good idea to respond to the actual statements they make as opposed to making shit up in your head. Novel concept, I'm sure, but you should get used to it. You might not get such a harsh reaction from people like me if you'd been honest about it from the beginning. It's just implicit and I have to pay this amount. It could go up, could go down, don't have any say in the matter. Except that any changes to the rate of taxation that apply to you in the United States are clearly delineated ahead of time. In the case of the United Kingdom, I have notification of what my expected tax breaks are, what rate of tax I'm expected to pay on my earnings will be, and what rate of other deductions I might pay will be. It's all done months ahead in advance of the actual changes that will occur in any financial year, and it allows me to plan my income and expenditure down to the nearest penny if I desire to do so for at least a full year in advance and be accurate in doing so if I stick to my budget. There are no surprises. It is therefore dishonest to suggest that it is all arbitrary and you might suddenly get hit with a change to your rates without you being aware of it. If it is in fact the case that you were hit with a sudden change in your tax rates one day, then it means you weren't paying attention. And the only person whose fault that is, is you. The social contract, that's where, that's where it gets you. Well, that's what it attempts to justify. Um, Are you actually going to come up with an actual response to anything that I've specifically raised in the video itself, or are you going to continue rambling like this? The analogy of going out to eat at a re restaurant is so ridiculous that it almost doesn't deserve a response. When you go out to eat, you get to pick which restaurant you want to go to. More likely it is because there can be no proper response to that point. But why are we skipping over large portions of my original video here? Let's point out a few things about this talking point while we're here though. First of all, he just said that you have the choice of which restaurant you can go to. Well, you have a choice of which country you would like to live in as well. This is not an argument. You get to decide what you want to eat. You also get to decide what country you want to live in if you decide you don't like the country you are living in. You get a list of prices off a menu. You also get a full rundown of what is expected of you in terms of income taxes and all other related forms of taxation that apply to you as a citizen, well ahead of the time you're actually required to pay taxes yourself. As a minor, you're not required to pay taxes. And as an adolescent who would still be classed as a minor, you get to learn all that it is expected of you in terms of your responsibilities as a citizen, including taxes, well ahead of when you will be required to honour your obligations as a citizen. None of this is sprung on you at the last minute. Of options, you can decide which of those options you choose or don't choose. And if you don't like it, you can not go back there next time. But, you know, it's kind of just understood that when you go into a restaurant, you're supposed to pay for it. Just as it is understood that if you live in a given country, you are required to abide by all of the laws and rules they set up. You can't just pick and choose which laws to be bound by when you choose which country to live in. 
If you wish to live in North Korea, and I really don't recommend it, you will be bound by all of their laws no matter which of them you find distasteful. But back to the restaurant analogy for a second. Let's say you do decide to go to a restaurant. Part of your bill for food in that restaurant goes to the profits of the owners, the salaries of the employees, and maintenance of the building, including the facilities that you will almost certainly never use. If you're a guy, for example, you will never use the women's restroom. I don't see any of these free-for-all fucktards arguing that it's unfair to be made to pay for these things, though. Yet they complain about how they're being made to pay to live in the country that they have chosen to remain in. There's nothing violent there, it's obvious that you're supposed to pay for it. Just as it's obvious, you're supposed to pay your fucking taxes. And if you can't see how it's obvious to honour your obligations to society, then you're a fucking idiot. I'm sorry, that's probably going to offend you. But if you really can't see how obvious it is to be responsible members of society and honour your commitments as a citizen of the country that you live in, then you really are totally and completely fucking stupid. Because they make it so obvious to their citizens, as obvious as a restaurant makes it obvious that you have to pay for their services too. And as for that little slip of the word violence in that last sentence, make some fucking sense, will you? If you choose not to pay the restaurant for the food you enjoyed and then choose to skip out, they have every right to call those jackbooted thugs, or as I call them, local law enforcement, to come and arrest you for theft of their property. That will involve violence if you resist arrest. Would you argue that this is in fact violence if you don't pay your restaurant bill? Or are you arguing that it's violence if you are made to pay your restaurant bill? In any case, if you don't pay your bill, the police will be called. If you don't pay your taxes, the police will be called. Just because you refuse to see the legitimacy of the government to place the tax burden on your income doesn't mean it will magically poof itself out of existence. Now, this is not the same thing as taxation. You don't get to order services from the government. You don't get to decide what services are going to be provided. You don't decide how much you're going to pay. This is all decided for you. Just as you don't get to decide what you want to order in terms of your accommodation when you rent an apartment, that too is decided for you. You'll get a specific sink, you'll get a specific toilet, you'll get a specific kitchen design. In the same way as a renter of an apartment is paying for the right to live in an apartment, you are paying for your right to live in the country you live in as a law-abiding citizen. I've already addressed this particular talking point, however. You have to flee the, the country to escape taxation. What do you mean, you have to flee? Does the United States prevent you from leaving of your own accord, of your own free will? Fleeing a country generally implies escaping from that fucking country, you fucking moron, in spite of attempts by the government of that country to stop you from leaving. Now, if you were living in North Korea, your arguments would be valid. But you don't live in North Korea. And neither do I. Then you'd have to go get taxed in a new country. You know? Unless you go set up your own Libertopia or anarchist paradise. Did you think of that? Now, his next, ob next objection he's responding to is that you can't renew a contract without explicit consent. I actually agree with his response to this objection, so I'm going to move on. Um, the, the next objection is that the government doesn't have a legitimate claim to the territory. Yeah, that's, that's a big one for me, that the government doesn't actually own this land. And my response? Come on, you know I made that response, so let's hear your objection to what I actually said, shall we? Now, this is actually a negative claim, and therefore it doesn't need any justification, because you, know, you can't prove a negative. And this is a case of special pleading. Nearly every government of the planet has the ability to demonstrate its sovereignty and the right to govern that particular territory, either through records of conquest, bequeathments from other parties, or records of purchase from other owners, and so on. Similar proofs of ownership that you would accept for private owners. Are you going to be a fucking hypocrite about this? If somebody says that the state does own this land, and is legitimately acting in this land, then you have to present an argument in favour of that. Actually, I have. You just chose to ignore it. The government can show receipts of purchase, records of conquest, and titles bequeathed from other parties to show that it does. So it does own this land. So the government can only purchase something through tax money. So if you believe that taxation is theft, that means the land is stolen in the first place. And if you just arbitrarily declare that taxation is theft without taking into account the legitimacy of governments to tax its citizens and then use that argument to claim that the money is stolen because taxation is theft, then you have engaged in circular fucking reasoning. See, 
All of these talking points do fit together if you actually take into account the overall context of the original fucking video. It's neat, isn't it? Records of conquest doesn't sound like a whole lot better now, does it? Okay, look, you egregious little shit. You call me arrogant, yet this is just the sort of arrogant adolescent behaviour I would expect from a fucking 12 year old. I have already addressed this particular talking point elsewhere. Refer to that and stop being a disingenuous little fucker. We took this land by violence. Oh yeah, um, therefore we legitimately own it. You know, like... Once again for the idiots in the room. The conquest of territory by force was declared illegitimate sometime in the 20th century. Are you going to expect us to retroactively apply that particular ruling throughout all of history? This particular talking point has already been addressed. Guess where? In the very same video that this is supposed to be a response to. This is not really a very sound view of property rights. Context matters. Let me ask you, are you going to take away Coca-Cola's assets because they used cocaine before it was declared illegal? Or are you just going to pick and choose which laws you support as legitimate? He doesn't give a conception of property rights, he's just like, you know, the state says that they own it, so they do. Um... Actually, the only living creatures that have a concept of property rights as fully understood by most intelligent people are human beings. This is a talking point that I've already addressed, but here's a bit more. I've been told that gorillas and chimpanzees have a concept of property rights because they were taught how to exchange money for goods. Therefore, property rights are natural. This is a misunderstanding of science. You know why chimps and gorillas understand how to exchange money for items? Because it was taught to them. Get it? In the same way property rights were developed and implemented by governments around the world, one government's ideas of what constitutes property rights are going to differ from another. Certain Aboriginal groups in Australia believe that land cannot be owned by anyone. And rather than be an argument in favour of this batshit crazy fucking idea, it actually supports the point that property has to be taught and recognised by people as valid. The fact is, you have property rights because your fucking government recognises them. End of story. Here's the big one, this is like the most important one, is that you can't get out of the social contract, so it's not really a contract if you can't even exit the contract. You can't? Do you live in North Korea? He bluntly states, as a response, doesn't like dance around the issue, all you have to do is renounce your citizenship and, and leave the country. Actually, I think you'll find my response was a little more eloquent than that, but the point remains. Are you telling me that you don't have the ability to renounce your citizenship and leave the country? This is stated like it's an easy thing to do. You have to leave everyone you know and everything you have to flee to another country. Does it follow that it's impossible to do? No, it doesn't. Yes, if you know people and you've collected a lot of goods, then it won't necessarily be easy or desirable, but the option is still there. This is like saying you don't have a legitimate option over which car to drive because there isn't one that costs a hundred bucks, runs on water and gets you 300 miles to the gallon. I'm sorry, but the option does exist, whether you recognise it or not. You have to pack up your property, pay for a plane ticket and then move to a country where you might not even speak the language and then get taxed in that new country. And? On top of all that, you know, there's not really that many countries that are all that awesome, you know, like... All these different governments supposedly have social contracts and they all suck. But the option is there. Again, are you saying that driving a car is not a legitimate form of transportation because there isn't a car that exists that gets 300 miles to the gallon and runs on water? So, you know, it's not really... And, uh, the yeah. This wasn't really a response to the point I raised. Really good option, you know, go to jail, pay taxes, or flee the country. Flee? Again. Do you live in North Korea? So you end up paying taxes. But are you, are you really consenting to the taxes because you didn't take the shittier two options? Yes. I'm sorry if you don't like that fact. People that argue in favor of the social contracts are usually progressives. You know, so like, is this progressive or enlightened thinking that you have to flee the country? Again? Do you live in North Korea? Like, where are their bleeding hearts for the people that are getting taxed and have to flee the country if they don't want to pay these taxes. Actually, this reveals a lot about the disgusting bigotry of people like this. Referring to people like myself as bleeding hearts is fucking bigoted. 
Just because we care more about the collective than we do about individual greed doesn't mean you get to label us like that. Fuck you. And people paying taxes in a country like the US and the UK aren't being made to enslave themselves all the time. We care about those who are suffering. People who pay their fucking taxes aren't suffering on the basis that they have to pay taxes. Cunt. They obviously don't give a shit about people that are getting their property plundered. Oh, well, this is new. So now, according to this fucking tool, taxation is neither plundering of property. For fuck's sake. But, you know, they care about everybody that gets subsidized by the government. Everybody? People who pay taxes don't get subsidies from the government. I'm a fucking taxpayer. I don't get subsidies from the government. Seriously, you really are a disingenuous little shit. Not once have you actually bothered to respond to a single point I have raised other than to go off on a tangent for your own political ideology. The next rambly bit of nonsense has been cut. Fucking tool. Now, the next objection is, you have to get permission from the government to leave. He says that there is a process to contract termination. Alright, well, there wasn't a process to contract entrance. Next time, try addressing the actual fucking point. Every contract, private, public, and all others in between, have a process which you have to follow in order to have contract terminated. And for the record, the process by which you are consented to the social contract, as I have already stated in the original video, is your parents choosing to remain in the country and giving birth to you. If you object so strongly to the social contract, get up off your lazy fucking ass, get a plane ticket, and leave. Fuck off. We don't want you, but don't bitch to me about how hard it is just because we don't buy your fucking plane ticket for you and forward all of your belongings to your destination. Do you expect us to hand everything to you on a silver fucking platter? Because it was implicit, right? So if it was an implicit contract, can't you just walk away? Like if you were in a restaurant and you ordered something and you decided that they were taking too long and you walked out, you're not going to have to pay for that. You know, you just walked away from an implicit contract. I bet if it was possible for a restaurant to come out and find you for just walking out without telling anyone they were taking too long, they'd do it. And you'd probably be okay with them doing that. But again, if you don't want to jump through a few hoops because you're too fucking proud of yourself, then you have another option. Drive out to the nearest coast, jump on a boat, sail out to sea about 12 to 14 nautical miles. There, you're done. You're no longer bound by the social contract. This too was in the original video. Why didn't you acknowledge this fact? Hmm. But now, suddenly, it went from an implicit contract to now you have to sign legal documents saying that you're no longer a citizen. And? Okay, well, which is it? You know, make up your mind. Yeah, I was wondering what the little fuck was going to do next. Just because you can enter into an arrangement implicitly doesn't mean that there is a process to contract termination. For example, if you contract for internet services is renewed on a regular basis implicitly and you choose to allow this process to happen, that's fine. But guess what? If you want to leave their service, you have to follow an explicit procedure. Make up my fucking mind, you disingenuous little prick. It's like, it's, all of this is completely ad hoc. Do you even know what that means? I doubt it, given you just went on about how I needed to make up my mind in spite of the fact that an implicitly agreed to contract can be required to be cancelled by written confirmation. I mean, would you like it if people could just choose to honour their obligations to whatever public or private entity they chose at will? Actually, that's entirely what your fucking crazy world would allow. All of it's just state apologetics. Really? So far, every response you have given to every talking point I've responded to has been nothing other than apologetics for your own brand of anarchism, which makes this an example of hypocrisy. Next time, you should try addressing the actual fucking point. You'll say anything you need to, so long as you prove that whatever the state is doing is justified and good. Just as randroids and anarchists will say anything they need to, including revisionist history, in order to justify everything that private companies do is just and good as well. Fucking hypocrite. Um, the next objection that he's responding to is that there is no alternative to the social contract. This is another way of saying that the government has a monopoly on law and certain other services. You can't p pick between competing agencies of arbitration, so... Um, 
he just goes on and says, well, yeah, you can. You can just go to another country that, you know, one that has a social contract that you like, or you can go live in international waters. He seriously says that. Go live in international waters. Yeah. Thanks, man. You're fucking welcome. It is an option. Ever heard of seasteading? It's where you sink a platform into the sea and then build upon it. It's actually a pretty cool idea if you can afford it. But why would you expect us to hand what you want as a society on a plate? So sweet of you. you know, I can go live in international waters. You know, you know. Aside from the obvious appeal to ridicule, this is still an option. International waters is an uncontested area of the planet's surface. What if you built an undersea dwelling that was entirely self-sufficient and could keep you alive with food, water, oxygen and shelter indefinitely? Your appeal to ridicule suddenly doesn't sound so fucking ridiculous anymore, does it chap? You still might get picked up by a government. Not in international waters. They have no legal rights there. You never know, because the government's like a rogue, irrational acting entities. What? You mean as opposed to corporations that decide to act upon the avarices of their CEOs and just try to acquire every piece of material resource in sight? And no. Government, by its very nature, is not irrational or rogue. That's just an appeal to emotion. But don't obey any fictional social contract. Declaring the social contract as fictional doesn't make it so. Sorry. They just do whatever they like. So do private companies in territories that don't have laws against certain conduct. Foxconn, China, employee suicides, wage slavery. Know why? There are no employee protections over there, and Foxconn is getting away with it routinely. It's only because news is getting out of China that we're even aware of it. Otherwise, they would be quietly getting on with this sort of thing without anyone ever questioning what is happening. China doesn't really give a fuck. Otherwise, they would have instituted labor laws to combat the problem, just as England and the USA have done. So, the next objection is the government does things I don't like. In my case, this would be a very serious understatement. They lock millions of people in cages, they wage wars in foreign countries, killing hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. They carry inflations, inflation in huge, gigantic Ponzi schemes. Here we go with a Killianite-like accusation of the Ponzi scheme. Guess what? No evidence has been presented for this claim, and my talking point still needs addressing. I'm cutting the rest of this rambly response so that we can get to when he addresses what I actually say. It tones it down a little bit so that you're kind of shielded from the horror of what's going on. Yeah, that wasn't my intention. But it was irrelevant to the talking point itself that all of this extra baggage was brought in. Can we deal with the response to the talking point now, please? So, he, he doesn't approve of the wars, so I'm like, Yay, let's, let's take this moment just to think about, we have an area of agreement. Fuck off. I don't want you to agree with me on anything. But then again, we don't always get what we want in life. I just wish you weren't so fucking childish and so obviously sarcastic about what I consider to be a serious and relevant point. That killing people in another country is a bad thing. Yeah, it is. I don't want to be a part of it. But the point I made was that it doesn't render government by its nature irrelevant since it is the actions of people occupying the positions in government, not government itself, carrying out those actions. And that's the difference you fuckers don't seem to get. Okay, so now he ruins it in the next breath by saying that this doesn't invalidate the social contract. Again, doesn't give an argument. I don't think I'm going to sit here and let some kid be the judge of what ruins anything. And I gave my response to a talking point. Read the fucking manual. I'm not going to write a treatise on my views of the legitimacy of the social contract every single fucking time a point is raised about it, you fucking moron. So, I think it's a bit odd to be saying that the social contract is justified on the grounds that we agreed to it by not leaving the country, but then they do things that we don't like, things that we don't agree with, things that we haven't consented to. Reiterating the same talking point that I just responded to is not helping your case, kid. I suggest you don't do it. For the record, a lot of private companies that I have had contracts with do things I don't like too but I'm bound by the terms of service of my contracts and cannot just up and leave any time I like. If I'm renting an apartment from a landlord who does things I don't like, I can't just up and leave as I'm bound by the terms of the contract and I have to terminate the contract in the correct way. And again, if you don't like the terms of the social contract, renouncing your citizenship and leaving the country is a legitimate way to do it. You may not like it, but it is an option 
and ignoring it won't make it go away. But we have consented to it because we didn't flee the country, so I guess we're, we're consenting to everything they do even if we don't consent to it. No. You have consented to the social contract. The situation you're describing is like North Korea. In the USA, the country you live in, you have the right of protest, the right to vote someone else in power who agrees with your values, and the right to apply to the courts for a redress of grievances if you feel that you've been wronged in any way. You don't appreciate the rights you are given under the social contract of your country. Seems like a pretty obvious contradiction. Only to a complete fucking moron. Taxes, all right, well, the next objection is that taxes are used for things I don't need, want, or support. Yeah, this is a very good one because this is actually why the analogy to eating in a restaurant doesn't make any sense because when you go to a restaurant, you order food and they give you the food that you order. Now, when you get taxed, you don't order shit. They provide things to the public and you might not need or want those things. And you might actually disagree with them. And I've already addressed this point. No wonder this fucking video is 28 minutes in its original form. Fuck me, are we going to get to the point any time today? Again, the rambly nonsense is cut. He, said, he compares it to be, being like you paying rent to a landlord. Now when you pay rent to a landlord, you give your money to the landlord. Now what the landlord does with that money doesn't matter. He can go out buy a TV if he wants. And once it went from you to him, it's his money, so he can do whatever he wants with it. He says this is the same thing with government. You pay money to the government, and now it's the government's money. Wait a minute, I thought they were supposed to be representing us. Yes, they do. It's called voting. You really are a disingenuous cunt. Apparently, when we pay money to the government, they can do whatever they want to it, in his view. That's what he says in the... In the... No, actually. But thanks for misrepresenting my fucking point. My actual point was that government has the right to spend the money it has collected in taxes any way it pleases, but that government has a process called representation. My understanding is that the war in Iraq wasn't as popular as I've seen it portrayed in Fox News. That's probably why there have been inquiries into it. I certainly didn't support the war, but again, that doesn't invalidate my fucking point. That there is a system of representation, and you can vote people in who represent your views on how things should be done. If you really feel that government isn't representing your interests, cast your fucking vote. Are you going to deny this fact now? Like, you pay government. He says explicitly that you don't pay taxes for the things that you don't use, and you don't pay taxes for the things that you do use. You pay taxes as part of your social contract is your moral obligation to pay revenue to the state. Actually, what I said was this. Your money in taxes is paid as part of your responsibility to honour the contract with the government in exchange for your continued right to live as a law-abiding citizen of your country. It's like a deontological argument of moral compulsion based on these rules. Stop using big words you clearly don't fucking understand. Do you have an actual refutation for the argument I presented? Now, of course you fucking don't. That say that you, oh, you have to pay taxes. Again, it doesn't just apply to taxes. You have no right to tell the landlord of your rental apartment how to spend the money you paid him as rent. This is why I brought up meta-ethics at the beginning, because I don't know what he means. That's because you're a fucking moron. Is he advocating deontology? Like moral facts? No. I'm responding to talking points. Read the fucking manual. And how does he know what these moral facts are? Because, you know, we still don't know what the justification of this, moral, this social contract is. If you don't know what it is now that I have explained it to you so many times, you will never know. Now, the next one is... If I want to get out of the contract, I have to leave. So I guess this objection, if I were to state it, would be this is an unrealistic precondition for entering into a contract. And his, his response is to just explain it away on the grounds that it's analogous to a rental agreement so that um, if you want to end the contract with your landlord, then you have to leave. 
which is true. Your stating that I'm just explaining it away doesn't negate the analogy between the two. You have the right to leave the same as you have the right to stay. You have the right to leave if you don't want to pay taxes, just as you have the right to leave the apartment if you don't want to pay rent. I'm sorry that this appears to give you so much trouble to understand. All right, well, you can leave and go down the street to a new one. It's not like you have to leave, flee the country. They're... Again, do you live in North Korea? They're totally not even close to being related. Yes, they are. Just because you do not want to acknowledge the point doesn't make it magically go away. I'm sorry. It doesn't. Like, one is like you move down the road, and the other is your life is turned upside down. And in both cases, you still need to leave. And for the record, sometimes moving out of an apartment results in your life being turned upside down, even if you don't want it that way. I've moved a few times for a few different reasons in the past. Two of those occasions were for reasons that resulted in turning my life upside down. So your argument that they are different on those grounds is a fucking ridiculous one that I have no time for. And he acts like this is a good analogy. And you act like it's not. Grow the fuck up and try addressing the underlying point for once. Like this is something intellectual. No, because it's really intellectual to dismiss someone's points with a fucking appeal to ridicule with yeah, let's just go to international waters. Yeah, real sweet of you. Fucking dickhead. If you want to criticize my standards of video, don't be such a cunt in your own. You'll get called for your hypocrisy. Now, the next one is, uh, the social contract is like a cell phone company that demands you pay service, take service from them because you live on their turf. Yeah, I mean, it is a lot like that. Um, You're a fucking idiot. No, really. You are. The argument was retarded when it was made before, and it's just as fucked up now that you're supporting it. Are you in any danger of making a coherent response to anything I've actually said? At all? According to the 30 seconds of rambling that followed, you clearly don't. But let's see what follows, shall we? What do you think that he says in response to this? You could probably take a guess, and he says that... Yeah, that's right. Poisoning the well. No, it's not the same, because the state actually does own the land. So I'm a bit confused about how he thinks that people come to own property, what's his philosophical justification for the ownership of property. You're confused about that? Fuck's sake. Anyway, since I've already explained it earlier, I won't be going over it again, and since the rest of this response is based on this stance, it's going to be cut so that we can move on to his next... Well, I guess you could call it a point. So, the government's making up rules enforcing rules, and then you're using their rules as a justification for what they do. You're an idiot. There's no other way how you can arrive at that conclusion. The government owns the land that they govern. You argue that they don't own the land, therefore they don't have a right to tax their citizens. You then claim that because they don't have a right to tax their citizens, they cannot own the land since it was paid for in stolen money. Again, as I stated earlier, this is a fucking circular argument. The reason they can tax you is because they have legitimate title to their land. The fact that a small, insignificant minority believes they don't have this right, based on the fact that they have decided that taxation is theft, because theft is the taking of money without consent, and because they have decided to ignore the context of the situation that a government can legitimately take taxes from people without their consent because they live in their territory, doesn't mean that all of a sudden, magically, it means taxation is theft, and therefore all tax money is stolen, and therefore any land they purchase is an illegal asset that is not legitimate. And if you believe otherwise, you're a fucking moron. There's no other way to say it. It's a big circle. It's called circular reasoning. Yes, it is, isn't it? Stop fucking using this reasoning. You people are the ones that declared taxation is illegitimate, and then retroactively applied that to history in order to make your claim that all tax money is stolen, therefore governments don't have the right to purchase land, and I'm sorry, you cannot do that. It's like saying the Bible is true because the Bible says that it's true. Well, the state is correct because the state says that it's correct. Actually, I've never believed in the Bible, and I've never made the argument that this guy is making. However, he makes the argument that taxation is theft because the government has no legitimate claim to land, and the government has no legitimate claim to land because taxation is theft. That's a real circular argument here. 
the next objection is you don't have any control over the social contract. I actually have made this argument before is that you don't actually influence anything that the social contract says and you know, there's input into what policies are enacted. Um, the counterpoint to the um, social contract has been very well articulated by Lord Hawkeye. I might put a link. Yeah, Hawkeye. Disingenuous cunt who chose to quote mine a single slide from a 20 minute video ignoring the context in which the slide was presented and then went on the basis that this was the entirety of my argument. He repeated this behaviour in the comments by summing up a 20 minute video claiming that I said The Guardian made it all up when I never made any such statement. If you're going to take that fucker seriously, you have some serious problems. In the description. And uh, he said that this is the only contract that he knows of in which one party has so much power while the other party has almost none at all. Really? So neither of you have heard of private enterprise at all then? Foxconn in China has all the power. Their employees have absolutely no say whatsoever. The only thing they can do is leave their job and go unemployed, which given the lack of social protections in China, the lack of well-paying jobs, and their unemployment problems is simply not an option. The employees therefore have to stay as long as their employer cares to keep them there, working ridiculously long hours while getting a pittance in return. All the while, Foxconn are making a ton of cash from them, and Apple are raking in huge profits to the point that they are on the verge of becoming a trillion dollar company during a fucking recession. That's wage slavery. That's the kind of fucking world you advocate for us. Now, the... FS Atheist seems to think that voting allows you to have some amount of control. It does. Are you going to deny that you can vote for who you want in power? Granted, there are problems, and the voting system needs changes in both our respective countries, as well as the process by which politicians and candidates receive campaign donations, especially in the USA. But again, throwing the baby out with the bathwater is not an option. Over the process, or policy, this is somewhat naive because no election is ever decided by a single vote and both candidates are almost always fucktards. Does that mean the political ideology of having a representative republic is in itself illegitimate or unworkable? No, it doesn't. Anyone who tries to argue this on the basis that there are some problems to be fixed is a moron. You know, just look at the current election. Romney versus Obama. Neither reflects my value systems, and even if they did, they both lie repeatedly, just like Obama did. Again. How does this invalidate the process itself? In the last campaign, he's lying in this one too. Romney's going to lie and he's not going to do what he says in the next one. And when they get into power, they're not accountable. Really? Has there never been an impeachment process in the history of the United States? Has there ever been the power to override a presidential veto if Congress feels strongly enough that the president is not representing the interests of their constituents? Again, there are problems in the system. I acknowledge these, but this is not an argument to throw the system out, and so it doesn't invalidate my argument. You're not accountable, right? And even if they do horrifying crimes, they still get their pensions. Not if they get impeached, nor if they get tried for war crimes in an international court that our respective countries recognize. The United States might well be the most powerful country in terms of military power on the planet, but economically, it's up shit creek without a paddle if the international community decides to impose sanctions against the USA for war crimes of the current administration. And don't say that will never happen. You can't possibly know that for sure. Now, the next objection is that the area the government occupies was taken by con conquest, and so this makes the social contract illegitimate. I actually agree that this isn't the best response that you could come up with, or the best objection to the social contract, because it's holding the current state responsible for past actions, and really the state is just made up of people, so all those people that were responsible for the conquest in the past are now dead. So I would um, kind of agree that his response to this one is legitimate. Uh, even still, it kind of begs the question, was conquest a legitimate exercise? in the past under the social contract? Is it still legitimate? We have already covered this. We cannot apply our moral standards of today to the past actions of the state and then hold the current administration accountable for past crimes. You said it yourself. Conquest is now illegitimate. You heard me acknowledge this. Conquest at one time was an accepted form of territorial acquisition. You heard me say this in the original video too. 
But just because conquest is no longer considered legitimate does not mean that we can retroactively apply that standard to past events. This is why I accept the legitimacy of governments like the UK and the US, because all of their conquest history took place before conquest was made illegitimate. As for today, with the US invading Iraq and putting in place a provisional government, I don't agree with that either. Had the Iraqi people specifically asked for our help and our reasons for going into Iraq were legitimate, none of this WMD crap, then that would have been another issue entirely. But we went on a false pretense and we went without their having asked us for help. Therefore, that invasion was illegal. In any event, had the invasion been considered legal and the justifications were sound, it still applies today that the United States cannot take possession of Iraq because conquest is no longer legitimate no matter what the initial reason was for going in. But we cannot apply this standard retroactively, and I have already explained why this is. It certainly would be odd for morality to be defined by whatever the hell the state happens to do. Like, it's almost like divine command theory. Which is something I don't advocate, and this is why I don't support everything a government does. I went out and marched against my government when we went to Iraq. Some people might call me a liar and claim this never happened because they want to believe that I have an innate worship of the state. But it happened. Again, not everything the state does is something I necessarily support or even agree with. Sometimes I disagree rather loudly, but that doesn't change the fact that I recognise the legitimacy of the state to govern in the first place. In terms of like the Bible being legitimate, like now laws are legitimate because they the government says that they are. Whatever the government says is now objective morality. Again, I don't advocate this position. It's far more complex than this. If the government tomorrow decided that homosexuality was illegal again, I'd be the first to object to it on the grounds that it is discriminatory and it breaks the European Convention on Human Rights, but mainly because gay people are people too and they shouldn't be treated as criminals because they have a natural reaction to their sexual orientation. The attempt to defend laws, that, or the attempt that he presents to defend laws is pretty interesting as well. He argues that laws are, are necessary to have a functioning society. I actually agree. You know, that's not really anything revolutionary. There should be some system to handle murder, theft, and rape, among other crimes. The difference between me and my opponent here is that he prefers for there to be an organization in society that has a monopoly on creating and enforcing laws. How else do you propose that laws be enacted and enforced? This is going to be interesting. The organization, i.e. the state, murders through war, steals through taxation, and sets up prisons where people get raped. Women often get raped in the military as well. Okay, so where's your evidence that any of these things, besides your ridiculous fucked up position that taxation is theft, are actually the fault of government? You know why women in the military get raped? Because of rapists. You know why people get raped in prison? Because of rapists. These things are not the fault of governments. Now if people are being raped in prison and the military, then governments have a responsibility to put that shit right. But if you want to blame them, blame them for not doing enough to stop it. Not for instituting the practice in the first place. Because they didn't. The claim that we need an organization to steal half my property and protect my property is kind of self-defeating. Oh, look. Straw man arguments all over the place. Defining taxation as theft because you want to is not impressive. I've already covered this, so I won't do so again. So maybe we should have competing organizations responsible for arbitration. And who is going to be responsible for ensuring that all of these organizations don't step on each other's toes? I don't know about anyone else. But to use these fucking tools as definitions for a second, not all monopolies are bad things. Imagine the following scenario. You have a country with one law enforcement agency and one code of laws. You have a neighbouring country with a competing set of dispute resolution organisations and only a basic barbaric code of laws specifically prohibiting murder, an undefined and vague reference to fraud, theft, as defined in a libertarian tradition being the taking of anything without consent, an undefined and vague reference to kidnap, and assault. In the monopolistic society with one law enforcement agency and a clearly defined code of laws, people cannot fail to understand what they can and cannot do in their country. Everyone is accountable no matter how rich or poor they are, and the crimes and punishments are clearly detailed. No one 
is above the law, no matter who they are, why they are in life, or who they have signed up for with any other services. In a competition-based society, people will be left wondering exactly what is entailed by the words fraud and kidnap in relation to what they can and cannot do, leading to lengthy arbitration cases where someone accuses any other individual of fraud or kidnap. You have competing DROs who are trying to get you to sign up to their business. They will do their best to secure what they call justice for their customers no matter whether their customers are right or wrong. In the situation where accusers are with one DRO and the defendant with another DRO, they will try to resolve this dispute somehow, probably with a civil penalty for some form like monetary compensation. Frankly, I think this is ridiculous because no amount of monetary compensation will make up for the death of someone who is murdered. And what of people who aren't even with a DRO in the first place? Bill Burns too has made a video on the subject and I refer you to his video where he addresses the problems of having a society that relies on competing DROs in place, link below. The situation is fraught with problems and with competing organisations all vying for people's business rather than getting on with the task of law enforcement. You can quickly imagine that they will all be looking out for the interests of their clients rather than with enforcing the law equally on everyone. It's, it's, it's not like a completely ridiculous idea. So like anarchists aren't saying like, oh yeah, we, we could all just get along and no, no crimes would ever happen. No, like, crimes would still happen, it's just that we don't need this centralized organization to be responsible for handling everything. I've already addressed this. The fact is that in order for everyone in the specific territory to be accountable to the law, you need a law enforcement agency who will ensure that everyone is accountable to the law, not just to look out for their paying customers. And in order for society to function, everyone needs to be accountable to the law. Now, the next objection is that voting is evil because it's complicity in the mob's use of violence. Um, I don't agree that voting is evil because it's, uh, I see it as irrelevant and completely useless. Not really. A lot of people voted for a specific politician to take over government. That politician got in. If he is not keeping up with his campaign promises, then that's his fault, not the mechanism itself. The mechanism works, not too well in the United States, but it does work. And then he responds by saying, and the free market, ca and free market capitalism is evil, is evil because it uses criminally obtained funds to buy influence in people's lives. This statement is actually non-cognitive, it doesn't mean anything. Maybe you should have quoted what I actually said, and then added the statement I made afterwards, where I acknowledged how ridiculous both positions sounded. Had you done that, you might not be treated like a dickhead. Now at this point the video pretty much ended. And after going through all of that, all we can conclude from this entire pile of shit is that what few responses he made to my points actually existed, they were rambling, incoherent, and didn't actually address the fucking point at all. He apologises for stateless societal values arguing that government is illegitimate, therefore taxation is theft, therefore governments are illegitimate because they bought the land with stolen tax money. Frankly, I don't really have anything that I could say to this pile of shit. I really don't. I don't even know how to add a decent conclusion at the end of it. Now apparently this isn't supposed to be the end of the story, there is a part 2 to this video. I'm not going to bother. You can see the kind of rambling incoherent nonsense I got from part 1. Frankly, I can't be fucking asked when the responder to my initial video couldn't even be bothered to actually respond to my actual points in an intellectually honest fashion instead of appealing to ridicule and making straw man arguments against my position claiming I had to present a treatise on the social contract and ignoring the point that the original video made which was to be a talking points video. For fuck's sake. For those of you who actually stuck around, thanks for listening.